Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be installing Linux Mint 18.2 on your computer. I'm going to be showing you guys how to upgrade from Windows to Linux Mint here. So why Linux Mint? I believe Linux Mint is probably the best Linux distro you're going to get. It's very stable, easy for newcomers, and has a Windows-esque look. So it's kind of the same. Um, really easy to get into, and today we're going to show you how to install it. So First, what you want to do is you want to head over to the Linux Mint page, which is linuxmint.com. And then we're going to head over to the download page over here. And we're going to open up which version you want. Okay, so Cinnamon is an addition that Linux Mint has built themselves. It's the most Windows-like look. Uh, I recommend you go with Cinnamon. I mean, if you have older hardware, some people might want to go with Mate or XFC. Um, um, KDE is a very more advanced Linux distro, so if you're a more advanced Linux user, you know, go ahead, download KDE. It's a great edition um, of KDE from Linux Mint that they put out. 64-bit um, is probably the version you want to download if your machine is not too, too old. If your machine was made in the last, probably five, seven, eight years, you're probably going to have to download the 64-bit version. So to do that, we're just going to click the link here, and then it'll take us to this page. If you know how to download by torrents, I suggest you do that. It's very fast. Um, and seed, make sure you seed to these guys because it's an open source project. You always want to give back a little bit too. Otherwise, if you do not have a torrent client, you can download from one of their mirrors, they have different mirrors for all over the country. You got a lot of mirrors if you're in the USA, if you're in Canada like I am, you got two mirrors here. Um, but yeah, select a mirror based on your country, it'll download the ISO for you. I usually choose this one if you're in Canada, it's usually pretty fast. Um, but since I already have it downloaded, we're just going to skip to how to make a USB version. So for if you're on Windows, any version of Windows, I recommend you use the program Rufus. You can get Rufus from the website over here. Just give a search on Google. It'll be the first link for you. And then you can give a give it to a download right here from Rufus 2.17. newest version. Okay. That'll download. You can install that just like any other program. No big deal. So once you open up Rufus, you'll see this blank screen. So first you're going to want to plug in a USB drive to your computer, your USB drive will then show up here in Rufus, and then you're going to click this button, and then you're going to go browse to your ISO file, as you can see I have a lot of ISOs here, you're going to choose your Linux Mint 18.2 cinnamon, okay, and once you plug in the USB drive, everything will automatically fill in, and you can click the start button, it'll run, okay. Be warned that do not select your hard drive here because this will wipe out the entire disk. So make sure it's your USB drive that shows up. Rufus is usually pretty good with that. I've never had a problem with a hard drive showing up instead of a USB drive. As you can see, none of my hard drives are showing up here because I don't have a USB drive plugged in. But there you go. So I'm going to be installing in a virtual box today. So as you can see, I booted it up right here. So this is the equivalent to just plugging the USB into your machine, turning on the power button, hitting your key to get into your boot screen. On some motherboards, it'll be either F12, Delete, F2, or F8. It is F8 on my motherboard, um, but it could be different on yours, so make sure you check your manufacturer motherboard manual for um, the boot key. Okay, so here's Linux Mint. Um, this is what it's going to look like when you boot it up out of the box. This is running live on a live CD, so this is running off the USB right now. Okay, guys, so you can make any changes you want. Nothing's going to happen to your computer, okay? Um, so first, you, what you're going to do is you're going to want to try out the operating system, making sure your internet connection is working, um, if you need Wi-Fi drivers, stuff like that. So I would I would start by opening the welcome screen here if it doesn't pop up automatically. And it's going to open up here for you. I would go through the documentation. Just know what you're getting into. Take a basic read of it. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just skim through it. There's some important stuff in there that you can learn. Um, 
the big one here is drivers right here. Okay, guys. So you're gonna open up your drivers. It's gonna load the software. It'll be. This will take a little bit because I'm on a virtual machine, of course. But it'll be probably a lot faster on your machine. Okay. Yeah. I know I have an internet connection, but oh, so the repository isn't working. Okay. Interesting. Thanks, Linux Mint. So as you can see, I'm I'm using drivers here. They're already installed out of the box. So on most machines, you're not going to see these two drivers because these are just VirtualBox specific. Um, on most machines, if it's an Intel machine, you're going to definitely see the Intel microcode. You probably want to install that. Just helps for a little bit better overall performance. Um, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, your NVIDIA drivers will show up right here. And you're going to want to in, uh, install those. You want to install the proprietary versions um, of the NVIDIA driver because I find the open source versions are just definitely not as good. Okay, guys. And that's just the way it's going to be. And if you are all open source and you don't want to use anything proprietary, don't get an NVIDIA graphics card, okay? Because they're really not going to work well with Linux without their proprietary driver. Um, but if you have a graphics, NVIDIA graphics card using the proprietary driver, it's great. Works great with Linux. No problems, no issues for me so far. Okay, guys? So... We're not going to want to install any of these from the live environment here. You're going to want to do this afterwards, but you just want to make sure that if you have a device, you have a driver for it, it's going to work on Linux Mint 18, which it should because most of the drivers are now ruled into the kernel. Um, if you have a Broadcom wireless card, the drivers are not supported out of the box in Linux. You will have to install the system first and then go down the, download the drivers afterwards from this driver manager. So what you would do in that case is either you could plug in an Ethernet cable, get the install finished with, because um, you're going to need Internet to download those drivers afterwards, okay? So just be aware of that. If you have a broad car wireless card, be sure you have an Ethernet cable around when you're installing Linux Mint, okay? So first we're going to get into the partitioning scheme um, when you're installing Linux. So we're not going to open the installer for this. I know some people are going to say, oh, you could just partition from the installer, but no. We're going to open up Gparted here, and we're going to do all our partitioning through Gparted. As you can see, I've set up a typical um, how Windows would look when you come from Windows to Linux. So you're going to have your OS partition, which would be your C drive, and then you're going to have your recovery partition which would typically be a D drive from a manufacturer and then there's just some unallocated space because this is an NTFS um, drive so it always has that at the end okay um, when we want to wipe out our drive for Linux what we're going to do is we're going to kind of come up here hit device we're going to create partition table we're just going to use the default that'll be fine but your warning this will erase all your disk data okay so as soon as you click this button, all your data on your disk will be gone. So now would probably be a good time to talk about backups. Make sure you keep a backup of all your files before you move over to Linux Mint. And you know what? It's really important, guys. Just It's very simple, and I'm going to show you something. Do not, do not, do not use this built-in backup utility from Windows. This stores it in a proprietary format that Linux cannot read. So do not do this. Okay, I'm going to re repeat it. And I'm not responsible for your loss of data if you choose to do so. Okay, what I do recommend on the other hand is if you want to create a system image for you to go back to afterwards, I recommend you guys do that. So you can just come over to here, you can go into um, control panel, you come into under settings and security, you'll see backup and restore. You click that, you'll come up to this window over here. It says create a system image. You can create a system image right here. It'll take an entire image of your hard drive. So that way, it'll snapshot all your data, all your programs. And if you want to go back to Windows afterwards, it makes this really, really easy to do. Okay? Um, I do recommend you do that if you're still unsure about going to Linux and you just want to try it out. I recommend you create a system image in Windows, and then that way you can go back afterwards if you so choose. Okay? Um, so we're going to back, jump back up over here. Now for this video, if you're sure you want to install, and you're sure you want to do this, you're proceeding at your own risk, we're going to click apply, and that'll wipe out the drive. So now all of our 
windows, partitioning, data, it's all gone now. So we can start fresh. So we've created a new partition table on the device. So next we're gonna go up to this icon, we're gonna click new. We're gonna have it under ext4, that is fine for Linux, that is the Linux default file system. We're gonna make it the full size here. And we're just gonna go Linux. It doesn't honestly matter what you're gonna do here. The point was you just created a new partition table, you got rid of the Windows stuff, and you're not letting the installer do it, okay? Um, if you wanted to set up a multiple partition install, if you wanted one partition for your root partition, and one partition for all your data, you could do that here. Um, we're not gonna do that in this video. I can show you guys how to do it in another video if you like. Just leave me a comment down below if you'd like to see that. Um, but we're just gonna go with the one partition, everything inside one in this video, um, as this is a beginner install version, okay? So we're just gonna get out of that, and now we're ready to open up the Linux Mint installer. I'm gonna double click that. So it says right here, please read the release notes. You don't really need to read the release notes, there's nothing in there to really, really read, okay? okay? Click continue once you select your language. Now this box is gonna pop up, it's gonna be unchecked. You do want to check this box because this box installs your Wi-Fi drivers that are might be in the kernel, not Broadcom drivers. Don't get confused with that. Broadcom drivers are not there. If you, but some Intel drivers will be here, and there, and some of them will be your MP3 media um, and other video codecs that you'll need to start playing, listening to music, and playing video over the internet and on base and locally on your computer. Okay, guys. So you need to check this box if you want your MP3s and your um, MP4 videos to work, okay guys? I'm gonna hit continue here and it's gonna buffer for a while. It's gonna take us to the disk partitioning screen as we're gonna see in a second. And now I'm on a virtual box, so of course it's gonna be really slow. But on a regular computer, this will sit there and buffer for about a minute or two. So it hasn't frozen, it's just thinking um, and scanning all the disks and scanning all the information and saying, okay, what can I do to install? Okay, it's a very smart installer. It'll do it mostly for you. So when you come to this screen, you're gonna see probably two options. If you're on Windows and you have Windows installed in your machine, you're gonna say, dual boot alongside Windows. Do not click the option. Do not set up a dual boot because Windows has a habit of breaking Linux, okay? And if you set up a dual boot, there's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong, and you'd have to learn how to fix those as it came along, and that's some very advanced Linux stuff in order to fix those, okay, guys? So for beginner users, I recommend you just erase the entire machine. You start over with Linux, and if you so wish to go back to Windows after, that's why you created the system image, okay, guys? So you can always do something else and then that'll um, allow you to create your separate root and home partitions as I said as in a more a little bit more advanced step we can do that in another video if you guys choose and if, if you want it again leave a comment down below but for this video we're just gonna go erase disk and install Linux Mint very simple option let the installer do everything for you and then it will get going saying okay we're using this device SDA and we're gonna format partition one as the XT4 and partition 5 as swap. Okay, guys? Pretty simple. So your swap space is just like um, a page file in Windows. Okay, so your swap space is going to like be like virtual RAM. So when your RAM's full, it's going to start swapping some of that out to the hard drive. That's what your swap space is for. Okay, so you're going to choose where your time zone is. I'm closest to there. So that'll be my time zone. Okay, and English US is probably going to be fine for your keyboard. If you're in the UK, make sure you choose English UK, etc. Okay. So your name, pretty simple. You can put your full name. I will put my full name here. Okay. And we're just going to name this Calvin Dash Virtual Box is fine. Now it'll automatically choose a username for you. If you'd like to change your username, you can. Just it has to be all lowercase. Okay. So make sure there's no uppercase and if you put an uppercase letter in here it's not going to take it okay just make sure it's all lowercase um pick a password so linux will ask you for your password every time you want to do an administrative task so make sure you have the right password um 
and it's easy to remember and it's somewhat secure okay guys you don't want to make like a password like one two three four but you also don't want to make it like 50 characters long where you can't remember the password and you have to type it in every two minutes and once okay so I'm just gonna type in my password here that I use for my Linux machines okay so there's an option here that says login automatically you guys can click that if you would like um, if you do this you will have to manually unlock your keyring if you have saved passwords in Firefox or Google Chrome um, so I, yeah, I suggest you always require your password it's a little bit more secure it just helps your system run more efficiently overall okay guys you can also encrypt your home folder um, it does provide a little bit extra security there's a little bit of performance hit when you encrypt your home folder also if you encrypt your home folder and you boot up into another Linux distro, you're not going to be able to read the data from that home folder. Okay, guys? So there's no way of recovering that data if your OS dies and you boot up another Linux distro, all that data is gone. So if you encrypt, make sure you have a good backup system. Okay? And now we're just going to click continue and it's going to run through installing. So Linux Mint has been installing in the background the whole time ever since we um, clicked OK on the disk partitioning screen. So it's going to go. Um, really fast here we're almost done the install um, here now we're on the second stage so it's been running in the background all this time so it should go really fast okay guys okay, so I'm just gonna cut here and we'll come back when the install is done okay back here Linux Mint is finished installing now so we get this installation complete screen come up so we're gonna click restart now and that'll eject and make sure you're gonna pull your DVD or your USB out out of the computer right now as it says right here please remove the installation medium press enter so I'm just gonna press enter and VirtualBox does it for me it's gonna reboot um, so another thing I forgot to mention before we were installing is I very much suggest that you turn off UEFI boot um, on your machine because UEFI boot can is known to cause some incompatibilities with Linux. Um, Linux Mint usually boots fine with UEFI. It has no issues with it. Um, it just creates a separate partition for an EFI partition. Um, it's just when you have multiple Linux distros, some that aren't compatible with UEFI, some that are. Um, it just kind of gets messy overall, guys, especially with, with advanced disk partitioning schemes. It gets a little bit messy. So I do suggest you turn UEFI off when you are installing Linux, okay? Um, now that that's out of the way, we're going to log into our new Linux mid system. And then you get a nice Linux mid welcome sound there. The welcome screen is going to come up. Um... And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to open up your driver manager, of course. And if you have any drivers, it should show up right here, okay? Um, so we have the VirtualBox guest editions, of course, and I still have that Intel driver. So I'm just going to apply the Intel driver, guys. It won't take long. Um, some drivers you are going to have to reboot for, like a video driver or a sound driver, you're going to have to reboot that for, for the Intel Microcode. You don't really necessarily need to reboot for it. It's not going to prompt you to do anything. Um, it's just going to install. Oh, see, it does prompt me to install but um, or restart, but you don't need to restart for this. It just automatically starts working. Okay, guys? Um, you can restart the machine whenever you so choose. So after we get all of our drivers installed and everything's working, we verified that. We're going to open up our update manager here. So you have three update policy options, okay? So keep my computer safe. This is just going to only update applications and um, codecs, okay, guys? It's not going to update the kernel. It's not going to update um, command line programs, stuff like that. So this will only, this is let me review the, some sensitive updates. It'll let you review the kernel updates. Um, it'll let you review some packages that are flagged. Um, to be broken, okay, um, or flag to be experimental, okay. So in this one, always update everything. I'll update every package on your system, no matter what it does. It'll exclude packages that are known to be broken, and it'll exclude packages that are known to be um, very unstable, okay. Those are two packages that I'll always exclude, and it'll say something right here about it too. Um, Updates with known issues are always going to be hidden, okay, no matter what you do. So I always select, always update everything. Um, it just 
a lot easier. Um, you get newer software and it helps resolve issues on your machine. If you do some sensitive updates, you might have some version incompatibility issues down, later down the road when you're using Linux Mint. So I always suggest always update everything. Um, you can always change this later on though if you choose to do another option. Okay, so this is going to pop up here with one update and it's going to suggest do you want to switch to a local mirror. I suggest you guys do this because it'll be a lot faster. So here, as I said, um, it's going to ask you for your password a lot in Linux. It's just the way Linux works and it's a very secure and operating system and that's just how it goes. Okay, so we're going to want to enter our password here to open up our software sources. So we're going to change our software sources here. We're just going to let it run and we're, it's going to rank the mirrors based on their speed. Okay. And then we're just going to obviously choose the fastest one for our area, which is this one here. Okay. It looks to be that one. Yep. And then we're going to do the same for the base packages. And I know for sure this is usually the fastest, which it looks like it is this time as well. So we're going to apply that, and then we're going to click Update Cache. And that's just going to re-download all, all the packages, all the software information from that new repository. Okay, guys? So this repository will be probably a lot faster than the um, regular Linux Mint repositories, um, and just because they're close to the area. So next, we're going to click Install Updates. We're going to give it our password. If I can type my password in right. There we go. And it's just going to run through that, and it's going to install the first one. Then it'll re-pop back up, and then all your rest of your updates are showing. Okay? So as you can see, these ones are flagged as security updates, and then these just ones are just software upgrades. Okay? Um, security updates are very necessary. Please install them right away. Don't wait too long. As you can see, the Linux kernels and stuff, they're all being updated on this level. Okay, guys? So this is some of the stuff that is a little more likely to break, but Linux Mint has flagged it as safe, so they've sent it down to you guys, okay? Um, I've never really had problems when updating with Linux Mint. Um, it's usually very, very stable, and I've never had an issue. I've never had a package break after installing an update, okay? So it's very safe, and make sure you just run through your updates. It's the first thing you're going to do when you um, start off a new Linux Mint installation, okay? So we're going to close that out, and um, that wraps up our video, okay? So welcome to Linux Mint. I hope you guys enjoy your new operating system. If you guys like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment down below if you guys have any suggestions or want to know more about Linux Mint in a future video. I will definitely be doing more videos on Linux, and just let me know what you guys would like to see in the bottom, okay, guys? So thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in another video, and I hope you enjoy your new operating system. Bye-bye.